okay we have two row well uh good morning from here and a good afternoon to some of us whose time zones are on afternoon hours good night to some of us also it's barely 25 minutes past 6 a.m and we are reaching you out just waking up and uh, i feel we we just have to start the day with with this discussion last night our uh, discussion was uh cut off along the way and i wouldn't know why uh facebook choose to add that way but nevertheless we must move forward nothing stops us because is ingrained in us to to propagate this uh, wonderful message to keep on firing until the enemy finally disappears that is what we sworn that is what we are under oath for but before i move ahead i would want to confirm from us if i am coming out loud and clear if i'm reaching you out loud and clear please if that is done if i'm reaching out loud and clear then we have to move on please confirm for me from your end are you receiving us loud and clear before we move to the analysis or the discussions of the moment anyway okay somebody said volume okay Somebody say volume. Oh, I see. We have to do without the earpiece and see what the volume might look like. So confirm if the volume is coming out better. Then we we'll move on. Yes, I'll unplug the earpiece to see if we can get a far reaching volume, yes, somebody said, Good, thank you, Mboma. Uh, thank you. So, we mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> so, we have to move forward. We are talking about last night, we tried to give a give a kind of uh, an elaborate discussion on Ambazonia and Efra and UN. But along the line, it was cut off anyway. Uh, whatever be the reason for terminating that program, is best known to the terminators <laughs> anyway. So this uh, morning, we want to make a discussion on what I tag the strategy of Mazin Namdekan that is deeply. Please don't mind the look of my face. This is just morning. I woke up a few minutes ago and I'm doing this day just morning and uh, you know when one wakes up his face somehow looks uh, not really brightened so we, we must move ahead anyway so we are talking about the strategy you know in every successful project in every, in any successful trip, what matters is the strategy or the template at which that project is going to be executed. No two ways about it. Your strategy, your policy framework is a determinant factor to what your result will look like. And when your strategy or when one strategy is deeply rooted in fault lines, his or her result will definitely be rooted on fault lines. And 
It is this strategy that Mazen Namdekano have crafted wisely that we are going to just look at. And remember the ones we are going to look at are those we think are healthy to look at. Are those we know are already on public domain. And that is exactly what we are going to talk about this morning. First of all, let's look at Biafrance before now. Let's look at you and I before now. Before now, the case of Biafra is a no-go area. You, you dare not mention it. It's unthinkable for you to, to, to call the name Biafra. Before now, you and I saw it, especially the post-Civil War generation. We saw the entire project. When we hear Biafra, what comes to our mind is just a fair project from a generation we don't know much about. We must sincerely look at our previous posture in order to appreciate what this guy is doing for us. Because prior to this time, when you talk about Biafra, it's all about a fed project by people we never even appreciated their inputs towards self-guiding their people. Nobody, there was no consciousness of how many persons were killed. Was there genocide? Was, the, was, was that a world fighting project? We are just roaming about being bereft of our identity, our history, and our essence as a people. That was just what the whole thing was earlier before now. And we felt the way we felt because nobody took it as a responsibility to educate us, to enlighten us, to rejuvenate our mindsets. And that's why we, we you know, we never cared to subscribe into the entire project. And there comes the beginning and the most tasking part of this project. Like I said last night, I said, look, you don't defend the nation with a conventional army. You defend the nation by a conscious people. Because when you look at conventional armies, they have uniform, they are paid. There is a limit they can go in defending. If you don't pay them, they will get discouraged from fighting. But when you build a conscious people, they would want to die for what they believe in. They would want to defend the land because they understand the essence. They understand the heroism inherent in what they are pursuing. And I said, with that means in the world, that the first task which no one before the arrival of Namdekan, found what doing. Virtually all of them neglected that worthy task. And what is that worthy task? The task of enlightening the people. Absolutely. No one felt it was worth doing. And tell me, how you can gain a nation when the people, the occupants of that nation, that land, are not incorporated through awareness and enlightenment campaign into the project. Each and every one of us spent time talking about Biafra because a man sat down 
from years hammering on radio, opening our eyes to real history, educating us, enlightening us, unifying us, boosting our pride, making us to move from a pitiable position to a noble position. It is a wonderful task. And of course, it is an expensive task also. You, you, you might not know why the rest of them who say they are fighting for Biafra, you might not understand why they can never venture on this side of the project. Because you need to, first of all, enlighten the people, make the people to have the consciousness of what the project is all about before you can talk about success. And if there is anything that is so disturbing to the Nigerian government, that is so disturbing to the British government, that is so disturbing to their co collaborators, it is how do we stop Namdekano from talking? Because they understand that his talking will one day snowball to the people fighting. It is, it is a social science. There is nothing you can do about it. The headache the oppressors are having is not because Namdekano is not shooting, but they understand the efficacy, they understand the deep penetration of his awareness campaign on his people. And of course, it is an expensive project. And we must understand that he is doing this because he is mentally disposed for that. You cannot talk intelligently. You cannot talk factually when you don't research. Everybody wants to listen to him because each time you listen to him, he has something unusual, unknown, uncommon to our earth. And when you don't have the mental muscle, you cannot do it. Those who are supposed to learn from him, out of jealousy and envy, decide to rise against him. And of course, they can't do much anyway. So what are we trying to say? The first strategy he unleashed, he act, he presented to us, is the most sophisticated and the most penetrating one. And what is that strategy? The strategy of reawakening. The minds of our people. Because, tell me, whether you like it, I respect your opinion, I respect your view, but the truth remains, if Namdekano is not at the central of the whole circle. What we know today wouldn't have been known by now, by us. And how does he know all these things? He knows because he engages his time researching. Majority of us are business uh, folks. We mind our business. We don't have time to do those extensive research. But somebody sleeplessly, somebody timelessly is busy researching, trying to, you know, dig out the hidden secrets. Things that Britain, things that Nigeria know that if he, if these people get close to these facts, 
that a lot of things will get damaged. And he's busy taking the risk, stealing a lot of sensitive files out of archives for our own consumption, which by the virtue of how we are configured, Ibambo, daily chase for survival wouldn't have given us this privilege to know these things. And of course, it's expensive. It's expensive to go after this information because these are state hidden information. They are all classified. They are not meant to be leaked. So, he is getting it on a very tasking investment or tasking uh, uh, process. So, when you look at the lives of Wazirike, uh, look at the lives of others retiring back to their estates in a worry, you don't blame them sometimes because the frequency at which Nam the can operate can only be operated successfully by a man who is mentally disposed, who understands international politics, who understands the maneuvering nature and complex nature of international environment. So sometimes I, 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 I seem not to blame the likes of Wazwiki because the current environment is not easy to be operated. You cannot operate it when your eyes is still on money. You'll be distracted with some notes of dollars. You cannot operate when you are not a studious folk. You cannot operate there. When you don't derive passion and research, these are things these guys find it difficult to do. They are not created. They never train themselves for research. They never train themselves for investigations. They never train themselves for other intellectual investments. And that's why you see them retire, retiring to the environment that they are familiar with. You see, it is not an insult to Wazrike, it's not an insult to any one of them, but the truth remains and the truth must be said. The dimension that is of that is expected of this struggle, they are not internally propelled to sell on those complex environments. It's never an answer. We must accept the way it is. Environment a class C person is operating cannot be equated with an, with an environment that SS3, based on Nigeria's uh, a secondary school arrangement is operating. You cannot measure the two. You cannot measure the two. You cannot. They don't know much. Whether you call it was it or any, I, I said I am not insulting them. We are saying it the way it is. When you don't know much about your people, about what you're fighting for, in fact, most of them, funny enough, don't even know the hidden stories about Biafra. Like uh, uh, I read, as I was saying, uh, it was the Portuguese that named Biafra. And it was so funny. He never even knew that there is no word like Biafra in Portuguese language. He never knew. So most of them don't even know. They don't even have a full load of information of whom they are calling. And that's why they cannot engage on enlightenment campaign on the people. Because already they are not enlightened. They don't know they are they have a limited information about what they are mentioning. 
When they mention Biafra, the Biafra they mention is what they read on pages of newspaper. They don't know the Biafra that is in, in a lot of archives all over the world. They don't know the classified Biafra in Britain and other Western world. They don't know it. And they are not interested to know. So, but this guy, Mazen Amdekan, took it as a responsibility to start entering into sensitive areas, bringing information. Let me tell you what shakes the world is information. What Nigeria is panic of is the volume of information, which to them is not meant to be known by an ordinary citizens of Biafra like us. But this guy goes to those classified areas, get this information, and share to us freely. Share to us without, you know, share to us effortlessly. And that is what is disturbing Abuja. Because they understand that the level of information he is exposing us to is already making lions in midst of sheep. Now you understand it. Somebody is speaking, he's not shooting, and there is panic all over the world. Why they are panic is because he is dishing out what they believe or what they felt ought not to be known by you and I. Because it is said, he who controls the mind of the people, control the people. They understand how they have been controlling us through mental game, mind games. They understand that. But this guy, Mazen Amdekanlu, comes and start cleaning up those garbage. Man, it's, it's not an easy task. Take it or you leave it. It is not an easy task. And they understand that already he's building soldiers. He's building warriors. Because when people are conscientized, when people are aware, they can die to defend the information, the right information at their disposal. And that is the headache. That is the panic. That is the impatience you're seeing going around. Ask yourself, why is this, why is this tension when Namdekano has not ordered for military confrontation? Why is this panic? So it's a simple question you have to ask. He's just speaking on radio. Everybody is panicking. He's just speaking on radio. It looks Abuja wants to burn. Ask yourself, why? Does he mean words are more powerful than guns or bullets? The truth is, yes. Let me share which I, I, I said I referenced last, on last night's program. Israel Go and research for it. Israel never had anything known as land army before 1948. There was nothing like IDF, Israeli Defense Force, was not existing. But there was something that was existing among the Jews. It was the consciousness of defending the homeland. By Military definition, there was nothing like IDF, Israeli Defense Force. But because the people were conscientized, because the people were enlightened, because they are, the people were exposed to the importance of defending the motherland, everybody was wearing a civilian wear, but they were all armies. That is the power of mental cleanup. That is the power of enlightenment. That is why everyone, all the enemies are in serious opposition to the Enlightenment campaign Namdekali is carrying out. Because every single day he speaks, he prepares an army of the people. Not a few individual, individuals crafted out to say, you are you, you are the soldier. No, any day he speaks, he is making an army of the people. 
He's scaling, programming scaling. the minds of the every day. single day he speaks. He prepares to an army to extra of the people to achieve. Mm. Not a few individual, individuals individuals crafted out to say you are you, it you are the soldier. No, any day he speaks, he is making an army of the people. Serious disturbing one. He's scaling, so scaling. programming the minds of the every day. single day he speaks. He prepares to an army to extra of the people to achieve. Mm. Not a few individuals. And individuals crafted out to say you are you, you are the soldier. No, any day he speaks, he is making an army of the people. Serious disturbance. He's programming the minds of the people. Every single day he speaks, he prepares to an army of the people. Not a few individuals. And individuals crafted out to say you are you, you are the soldier. No, any day he speaks. He is making an army of the people. Serious disturbance. He's programming the minds of the people. Every single day he speaks. He prepares to an extra of the people. Not a. If not that a man took it as a responsibility to tell us who we are, a man took it as a responsibility to destroy foolishness in us and cause you of him. Who is your leader matters a lot in what you do. It is social science. Leadership matters a lot in any, anything one does. If you have a foolish leader, there is nothing that will stop the people from being foolish. I mean the followership. Who is your leader matters a lot in what but you do. When the leadership, it is social science. Is smart, is bold. Leadership matters a lot in anything one does. If you have a foolish leader or reconfigure, there is nothing that will stop the people from being foolish. I mean, the followers. Who is your leader matters a lot in what you do. When the leadership, because we have it is social science, is smart. Is bold leadership matters a lot in unconsciously one does. If you have a foolish leader, his hunger for research, and we do that. Let's assume we're under the leadership of a man who loves pipeline guiding. All we've been talking about here is all about how to secure the Fulani pipes. You cannot see how leadership. Matters a lot in whatever everyone is doing. You can now understand how leadership matters. So we have we've talked about a strategy of enlightenment. Another strategy that Mazen Namdekano is implementing that is what commending is what I call the strategy of unifications. What do I mean by strategy of unification? I, I dwelt a lot in Jewish, the process of, the process the Jews followed in, in you know, establishing the state of Israel. I, I, I did extensive research on that, not just now, even before I joined the struggle, back days in the university when we study about the state of Israel. I, I really took interest on that. And I think we are having a similar approach on that. Mind you, the Jews, before Ben Gurion, David Ben Gurion, declared the state of Israel in 1948. Prior to that time, there were different groups in America, in Europe, in Asia, and other parts of the world who were agitating for the establishment of State of Israel. Please follow carefully for what I'm about to say. 
These different groups, some were led by Wesman, some were led by Hazel, some were led by different individuals. And in these groups, there were a lot of disagreeing points. Some were looking at a religious state of Israel. The, the, these are the people we call the Zionists. They were looking at purely theocratic state of Israel. They don't have, they don't want anything to do with a secular state of Israel. They wanted purely a religious nation. Just the way you have Saudi Arabia and other nations. They wanted a Zionist state. And to some, they wanted a secular Israel. To some, they wanted a kind of Jewish consciousness among the Jews, but not necessarily establishing a geographical entity known as a sovereign state of Israel. So when you put look at these disagreeing opinions from different groups, you will find out that it was really a very difficult task for these guys to harmonize themselves and pursue for one goal. Because at the level of philosophy guiding each of the groups, there were differences in terms of political philosophy or whatever philosophy they adopted. But one amazing thing, which is very, very important, you listen. One amazing thing was this. A set of them, a group, some of them, decided to move from theoretical framework. Some of them decided to move from mere postulating, mere theorizing, to a point of engaging the world, engaging international actors, engaging international players. And one of them was Wesman. One of them, another one of them is Hazel. These guys began to put pressure. I will relate it to what we are doing. These guys began to put, they began to put pressure on Her Majesty government, British government. And as a result of consistency in pressure, British government gave them attention. And that led to Balfour Declaration in 1917. Now, when, sorry, remember, we are, we are still in the zoo, so anything can happen. The light just went off. So what am I trying to say? Although the day, the day is still coming. Mm. Sorry, electricity just went off. It's a, a smart reminder from them that uh, we are still uh, in the contraption. So what what am I trying to say? Um, so they put pressure on British government, and Buffer Declaration was crafted and all this. So at that point, because results have been achieved, the rest of the group lined up. The rest of the group lined up. And there was unification, which led to, finally, the establishment of the homeland. So you can now understand how it plays out. So it is, to the strategy of Mazen Namdekan, because we are not seeing a lot of headways, because we are not seeing a lot of results, there is a soft crossover by some groups to IPOB. Now, let me now explain to you what I mean by crossover. Remember, every group is made by people in that group. What makes IPOB is the people in IPOB? What makes Masob is the people in Masob? 
Now, we are now realizing that a lot of people, individuals, in various groups, are busy moving into IPOB. Even when their leaders don't know about this. Why are they doing that? They are doing that because they are carefully observing all these years, observing the trends of things. They are watching the way things are moving. They are not stupid. And they are coming to the realization that it looks this guy is the only guy, IPOB is the only platform that the federal government is worried of. You understand me? They are carefully observing that our leaders in different groups are not even a headache to government. But this guy is the one that the government is afraid of, that the government is worried of. That means something must be unique about him. And you see them, they start relegating their loyalty to their previous group to a new platform, which they are seeing is working, and which is IPOB. What is the advantage of that? Advantage of that is this. You cannot go into battle. This is war science. You cannot go into battle with a multiple commands. A battalion or the soldiers cannot go into war front and commands are coming from different angles. What it will lead is confusion among the fighters, among the warriors. So, with the position IPOB, come on, I think we, we are speaking something that each and every one of us should learn from. But with the position of IPOB, because IPOB have survived a lot of conspiracies, efforts to destroy her, but she is standing strong, she's surviving. Now, the, the, the advantage of this is that the people are consciously and unconsciously believing on her people are consciously on and unconsciously subscribing seeing that why others have given up why others have retired some have moved along with their pipeline contracts some have moved along with their estate business why some are still moving along with their road mapping and all the rest of them. And IPOB is well positioned. The advantage of this is that if there is going to be a skirmishes, if there is going to be Idu Akanon, the command will always come from one single unit. And source of information can only come from one single source. The command will come from IPOB leadership to all Biafrans. I'm not saying to IPOB members, I'm talking about to all Biafrans. The information will only come from official platform, Radio Biafra. You can now understand how this is going to be a strong unification platform for us you, you are now understanding what we are saying and you cannot achieve this without consistency so when you look at all oh, Mazinam de Kalu is building up these years when you look at the level of opinions coming from Biafras who are not even IPOB members when you digest their opinions you will see that yes they are not IPOB member but they have submitted their loyalty to Nam they can they have submitted their loyalty to the leadership of IPOB then you will appreciate how we are unconsciously structuring ourselves positioning ourselves for what is to come because in a battle front you cannot have signal coming from this from this 
our ability to make a strategic positioning, which we have done, thank God for the consistency of our leader, the strategic positioning is going to snowball into a central command. And this is what the federal government does not want. Federal government wants a duplicated voices. Britain wants a duplicated voices. They want to raise multiple sources of command because they understand the importance of this. That when there are, when there are multiple sources of command, the people will be confused because they don't know who to take up his own and not. But because we are consistent, because we are offensive, we want to attack. You can see we have beheaded a lot of this uh, FG set up, federal government set up distractions. We have really beheaded a lot of them. In our offensive, because we are angry, of course we are. We have demolished all those distractions. We have disabled, we have decommissioned them, we have forced them to go into relegations. And today, you can see them, we have deflated them. So, the strategy of Nandekan, which gets towards unification, is an amazing one. And of course, it's an amazing one. And another strategy, we have talked about the strategy of unification, we have talked about the strategy of uh, enlightenment. Another strategy which is so killing to the Nigerian state, it is so killing, is the strategy of defining a battle theater for Nigerian government. What do I mean by that? The wisest warrior takes her enemy to the battleground he wants the battle to be. That is the wisest warrior. A foolish fighter allows his enemy to define the wisest the battle warrior theater for him. This One of the things IPOB have done to the battle find he wants a battle the theater. To be. That is the wisest word for the Nigerian state. A foolish fight. Nigerian state have one, had wanted us to pick up arms earlier before the battle theater for him. him. And you know what that means? This one of the things have done. If we had picked up this arm earlier before now, could have been an easy walk away for them because they would have easily the said they are terrorists for the Nigerian state. And they would get a international sympathy. Nigerian state fought. Namekan, knowing better than them, decided to engage them on. In war, there are two forms of fighting. For those of us who did social science, or by extension, who, who did international politics, there are two forms of engagement, fighting, as far as international politics is concerned. Uh, concern. Either you use what we call soft approach or hard approach. In any of their definitions, they are all war strategies. What is hard approach? Hard approach or hard uh, power, naked power, is when you decide to use military confrontation. When a country decides to unleash military, it is hard approach. They are equally result oriented. You can use a hard approach and still make result. There is another approach we know as soft approach. What is soft approach? When you decide to use non-military approaches to fight your enemy, they are equally dangerous. Let me analyze it. So that we understand why Namdekano is headache to the presidency, why Namdekano is a headache to a lot of guys. Namdekano have, have two options. 
before him. One is hard approach. Another one is soft approach. But do you know what? Federal government would have loved him to activate hard approach earlier before now. Hard approach implies building up militias and start fighting. And this think a human being is talking now that is the final analysis we make before we come to the end of the Namikala have two options either to activate hard approach or soft approach and federal government wanted him to come on hard approach because they know he will be crushed IPOB will be crushed and our fate will be redefined to the worst state because if we had gone on hard approach, federal government would tell the world that just the way every one of you are suffering of terrorism, we have a new terrorist group. And believe you me, the saboteurs in your midst, as of them, would have had a lot of grounds to be an instrument of following the federal government to tag, you know, IPOB, a terrorist platform. Believe you me. Believe you me. If we have chosen a hard approach, could have been so devastating to us. Yes. Because the federal government would have had the preview, would have had the opportunity and said to the international community, these are terrorist group, we are suffering just the way you guys are suffering a lot of things. But do you know what? Mazen after sitting down, he now realized that no, this is not the right time for the activation of hard approach. Because we have the, we have a lot of things to prove the federal government wrong of. And he activated what we call soft approach. This is what Nigeria University brain will never know. And that's why because they don't know all that what most of the animals know is hard, hard approach. But they never knew when a white man said pain. Is mightier than sword. They never knew what that uh, uh, idiom mean meant anyway. So he now took them to the environment they are not familiar with. And what is that environment? It is the environment of soft approach. And what does Environment of soft approach entails. Environment of soft approach requires more of human resources because you must be meet. You must meet a lot of lobbying firms. You must meet a lot of scholars. You must meet a lot of international players. And he took them there because federal government depends have 
the conduct of her foreign policy, the conduct of her international engagement on contractors. I will explain to you why you see federal government losing out. A lot of foreign bodies, consultants, uh, consultancy firms, are the ones who run in Nigeria foreign policy. Because within them, they don't want their fans to conduct foreign policies for them. And they understand that the full animal or the outsama cannot engage, cannot dialogue, cannot constructively influence all these international players. So what they did was, instead of Igbo man to be there, let's contract to foreign firms to conduct our foreign policies. Because they understand that Bia France by nature are diplomats. Because these people who do more on buying and, and selling are already experts in engagement, in deal breakout, in, in a selling out deals. Because Every day we seal out deal as a people on a local level, at the level of commerce, at the level of trade. So the issue of engagement is not something we have to learn. It's ingrained in us. So, but because they know that we cannot allow them to be in charge of Nigerian foreign policy, they began to contract this out. So the implication is that when an American took them to soft ground, and there are places the issue of Biafra comes up. Listen. And we see IPOB sending a Biafra delegate, a Biafra to the negotiating table. Now, these people will be expecting Nigeria to send a Nigeria to the negotiating table. What they will see is white people on the negotiating table. And they will be forced to ask themselves, are these white people Nigerians? These people came with their own people to speak for them. And Nigeria is coming with a consultancy firm. Now, it shows that these countries seem not to even have people to do the deal for them. And their weakness began to expose. There are places IPOB will take the matter to and there will be meetings among the, uh, the, the opposite parties. IPOB will send a Biafran diplomat. Instead of Nigeria to send her own diplomat, what these people will see is a New York-based consultancy firm coming to say we want to represent Nigeria. And this will be forced to ask, are there no citizens who can conduct the foreign policy, conduct the diplomacy for this country? And because it happened first, it happened second, most countries began to lose. Because these people always reach back to their home nation. They began to lose faith. In Nigeria. So the soft target which IPOB took them to exposed her weakness. And that is what Abuja is not happy with. Abuja is not happy because each day, every moment, every moment, IPOB advances on diplomacy. It exposes the vulnerability and the rickety leg of Nigeria as far as the international community is concerned. And that is what is giving them the bitter anger. That's why when you see RFI telling you oh, international community have abandoned them, when you see the Yerima, you are why you use uh, uh, the, the guy saying that an American has set fire this is what they meant. Ask them, how come about a man who has not shot a bullet has set fire? 
because they are getting the feedback of the disgrace internationally. So what are we trying to say? We have succeeded in defining a battleground for them, not falling into the battleground they wanted us to fall in. Because each moment, Nigeria tries as much as possible to lobby foreign firms, and that leads to wastage. That leads to a lot of wastage in terms of her limited resources. And that is indeed a serious worry for her. Because to them, it could have been easier for Nam the Kano to just pick up arms so that at least they use their arsenals to quell the whole thing than this guy forcing them to keep on wasting their resources among European firms and uh, American firms. So it's really disheartening to them. It's really killing. And that's why somebody came up yesterday and said, a senator, of course a senator in Nigeria said, why are we scared of the disintegration of the country? Because they understand the devastating measure, the deep wound they have gotten. And of course, IPOB has succeeded to position Nigeria, take this to the bank, you know, take this to the bank. Earlier before now, Nigeria was a choice of the multipolar powers. Maybe I have to break it down. I said earlier before now, Nigeria was a choice of multipolar powers. Multipolar powers, I mean, America would have, America had wanted Nigeria to remain an indivisible one. China had wanted, France had wanted, Britain has wanted, Russia has wanted. So she has been the choice of multipolar power. One thing IPOB succeeded in doing is to reconfigure that front into a new front. And what is the new front? And I will give instances how devastative that reconfiguration is. IPOB has succeeded in moving Nigeria from being a choice of multipolar powers to a choice of bipolar powers. Instead of multiple, IPOB reduced her to bi, which is two. IPOB has made Nigeria, forced Nigeria to embrace China. IPOB has boost, pushed Nigeria to go towards China because Nigeria art managers have understand that IPOB has won the Western Front that IPOB has won on her side. That IPOB is doing a lot of damages on Western Front. So the Fulanese are saying, uh, we are not going to continue contending the Western theater because it looks as if they, they, they understand the theorem better than not. So let's abandon it for them and run to Eastern front which is china and that is a good thing ipov has done because nigeria abandoned the western front and is running towards china nigeria has created made herself to be a theater for cold war between china and the western nations and that's exactly what ipov is enjoying today because nigeria is telling the Western Front, go to hell because you are giving a soft support to the IPOB, to the Biafra. We, we don't mind. You can die. Whatever wants to happen to you, we don't bloody care. And the Western nations are saying, okay, good and fine. 
We are going to use you to teach a lesson what it takes to be rebellious to us. And you know what? China, on her own, would want to say, don't mind them, we'll defend you. And in course of doing this, Nigeria becomes a theater for Cold War between the West and China. And that is exactly where we are today. That is, that is how the thing is stage managed now. Now, if you want to know what the result will be, I will give you two nations for you to go and understudy. If you want to know what the result of this present permutation, what the result will be, go and study about South Korea and North Korea before 1950 and the Korean Peninsula War. If you want to know what the result will be. If you want to also know what the result will be, you can study Chinese rule in Old Sudan and the Western rule and how it led to the formation of Southern Sudan. So that is exactly what is going to be. So it is a great job for IPOB to have forcefully uprooted Nigeria from Western Front, from her Western friends, and drag her to Eastern Front, thereby making her enemy to the West and a friend to the East. So, it is as a result of this that Erofa is telling you that the con nation con West, that countries of the world have abandoned Nigeria. You will not understand that statement. You will not understand that statement. It's as a result of this what IPOB has done that a country like Britain refused to release Alison Madhuikwe, the former petroleum minister. It is as a result of this that Mieti Allah is being impatient enough because they understand what the future looks like. So they want to a kind of Instead of us to wait to the according to the timetable of IPOB, let us scat, shake the table on time. Uh, I think you need to you need to really appreciate what is happening. You understand me? So you know, at a point you have dealt with a man, you have pushed to a man to a point that uh, uh, he, he he understands you have already destroy the system. So let us just destroy it at once. That is exactly what me ATL is saying. They understand that IPOB is strategically coming to a point that they will not like it. So what they are saying, let's just do, let's just, let's just scatter the table quick. And as the rant you are seeing, uh, this year, they are going to raise uh, five, five thousand, uh, one, or I think hundred, uh, five hundred personnel. All those things are reactions of the results they are getting from IPOB's uh, damage on them. And of course, the whole thing, you know, um, this thing looks like um, at earlier stage, it looks like they undermined IPOB, and that is how Kike wanted it to be. God, and that's why the Fulanis will never forgive the saboteurs. Because saboteurs, you know, distracted them by telling them, don't mind him, now the can is not serious. We deal with him for you, we proscribe them. And that will be the end of the activities. The saboteurs can never be forgiven by the full and you can mark it. They will definitely deal with them. Because when federal government wanted to take all seriousness on IPUB, the saboteurs were telling 
federal government. Um, you see, sometimes, yes, this, the activities of the saboteurs are bad anyway, but I would say they have it probably be a good instrument because they have been there than playing the seriousness of Nam de Kano. Uh, this than playing the efficacy of IPOB to the peril of the of the Nigerian state. So it was the saboteurs that always tell them, forget this idiot, forget this idiot. He is a hungry. Who knows him? You know, he's jobless. It was the saboteurs distracting these people. And of course, God used the saboteurs wonderfully. Because the saboteurs were busy, you know, pounding the back of these people, telling them, don't mind them, we will handle them for you. And they got distracted before they knew <laughs> the whole thing. The whole thing has reached to a point of uncontrollable. The point they cannot, the fact they are confused, they don't know what to do. If the saboteurs were not there, maybe they would have marshaled out a better strategy. You understand? They would have marshaled out a better strategy. But the saboteurs were always there telling them, they are miscreants. Don't worry, give us money, we'll stop them. And let me tell you, we'll stop them. We'll stop them. IPOB has succeeded in killing all the saboteurs on her way. Of course, when I say killing, I mean destroying them. All the saboteurs on her way. Just the way she's destroying even those who sent them. And not just that. IPOB has ignited the spirit of revolution. The spirit of quest for freedom. Even in the Yoruba land. Watch a lot of Yoruba young social commentators. They always make reference to them. They, can. they always make reference. They, there is this idea that people want to copy IPOB's modus operandi in their quest for freedom in non, from Nigeria among the non Biafra areas. You can see because of what IPOB is doing. The fire is ignited in Odudua, in Middle Belt. People are now copying the approach of IPOB. In so doing, IPOB have succeeded not just to liberate the Biafran people from Nigeria, has equally succeeded in igniting uh, from other people also. And that is amazing. That is seriously amazing. That is seriously amazing. So that is how it works. That is how it works. And is really, really a workable one. Beyond their own calculations, beyond their own expectations. Isn't that amazing? So when you when these guys sit down, when they sit down on their tables and look at the future of the country, when they sit down on the table and look at what the future holds on, they began to rant. They began to panic. They began to feel worried. And that's exactly what is playing out. Let me now tell you something. Something how everything is happening. It works over. Gent, I'm listening very, very carefully. If I say this and we end this program, it's going to be amazing. They have sat down, the outgoing generation. I'm talking about the generation of Obasanjo and all the rest of them. The so called Arewa consecutive forums, those elders. Even on her knees and other, they have sat down and they have they understand that it takes a young blood to defend the land, not an old one. Listen, Gente or Fuma, 
so that you understand. And they have taken a statistics of their use. They have taken a statistics of those they think are capable of defending the land. And they understand this indisputable fact that if war breaks out, Obasanjo in his age cannot fight, Ibibi in his age cannot fight. Those who will fight are the youths. And they have taken a statistic. That I'm telling you why you see this panic. IPB has not lifted up any arm, but they are worried. They have taken the statistics and know that IPOB through social media campaign have removed the minds of over 70% of Nigerian youth from believing in Nigeria. Because if war breaks, those who are supposed to defend one Nigeria project are the youth. But the dangerous thing IPOB is doing, which is a concern to DSS, why you see NAIA, National Intelligence Agency, going mad? Why you see uh, Asoro going empty? The worry is this. They have understand that IPOB, through her social media campaign, has removed the minds of the youth who are supposed to defend one Nigeria project from Nigeria by, first of all, making all this use to understand that any day you are proud of Nigeria, you are simply an animal. And you are simply proud of you. It's a psychological letter. You know, strategically, you know. So, on a Disney Adeka, Umokoro Bianya, Wesley, Enoaya, Jido Boda, Nanda Sago Hisi. I'm sorry for those of us who might not understand this language, now, but I hope somebody nearby will interpret for you. So, on a Disney Adeka, Nanda Tuga, Obobon, eh, Na emwe kesi mpuo mwe oku aya keta. Na umwa kaha ndi kwe sire nwago. Jido boda. Nofu. Iere kwe ziha. Eza na hawa ndo boda. Ha mochi mo. Na haga alwago. Ijide. Oboda nofu. So. When I saw rock things about this. It gets them mad. It makes them to be empty. When DSS thinks about them, it gets them disturbed. When NIA thinks about this, it gets them disturbed. Because IPOB mechala inda ihe to a point kuzi zerendi na loro haya Kese liki, kese wopota yu nyo nyo, mkane kwe si wopota, eba na alwaya. Ama me yote ene kwa. Onwe bri yu nyo nyo, ane kwe si wopota, eba na alwaya. Hai pi yubi megidere, megide banye no ikiti nde na alwaya ndo wopota haya. Na wazu mu, nto korobi ya ha. Na ana alwaya, ifu eba abara, ndi zu ewe. Meho nyo nyo, wopotari ambuwa. Oya na po ogu bubo nise. Ana atia strategically. Ema, oge, 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 bo, those days, when we are little, imu okripata, omu yana po okripata. Most of you abroad might not really understand, but with the village world, there is this ring warm that, you know, have really come on one's head, you know. Whenever that ring worm comes, it's called a creepata in my own dialect anyway. It will be properly scraped. The, the surface will be scraped with razor and the bubon say will be dropped on it. And immediately bubon is dropped on it, eh? Then you will now realize that the word is painful. 
And that's exactly what IPOB is doing. When we get some part of Nigeria creeper, we scrape it properly and drop some Gugonise. <laughs> and uh, indeed, it's killing. It's really killing. It's really killing. So when they take all these strategies into consideration, you know, it makes them mad. It makes them mad. Because, because they are realizing now that most of their use, the Yoruba use, are being pushed. into fighting for Yoruba nation. We, we, we are now reconfiguring, you know, it's a soft target, but very efficient. Uh, the efficacy is really penetrating. IPOB is not, you know, redrawing the map without them knowing. Every single composition of this country is being re remade by IPOB on a soft approach we are now beginning to tell people oh you say your name is oluwale oluwale i have opened a facebook account and start talking about oduduwa and oluwale is happy doing it uh, you say your name is uh, what from middle belt be proud of middle belt be proud of your identity you say your name is uh, Chukwode. Okay? No, I don't want to be Afro. So at the end, there is no youth at the center to now be proud of Nigeria. And this is what CIA have analyzed. This is what reasonable international intelligence agencies have uh, analyzed. You see them advising their companies to pull out, advising their investors not to go in. Because it takes youthful power, it takes youthful strength to hold a nation. But IPOB is busy in the other. They are 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 busy in the other. I know they came palak. I never palak. I got your side. I'm on your country, and nobody is to light for Nigerian state. And that is this is what the other ones are seeing that is giving them headache. And it is as a result of this that you see them; they are no longer having faith, even. In Nigeria military to defend the land. They are even worried that the soldiers from Middle Belt, the soldiers from southern Nigeria, that IPOB has penetrated them so bad that they might not even fight to defend Nigeria. You know, uh, uh, you know, this is this is really working. Now to them, they now say, because we don't trust these guys, because most of the soldiers are used, and they are using Android phone. Like, as this program is going on, some DSS officers are here. Some Nigerian military soldiers are watching, and they are saying we are speaking sense. So they are just there to collect their salaries, not to die for Nigeria. And we appreciate that some of them are here. We welcome them. So these guys have understand that IPOB has gone to a point that even their military, I am going to their military. Oh, one month, you know. I am going to go on. Oh, one month. They are no longer the letter we say. I am going to go on. What I am going to You know, they are no longer confident that these guys, this young youth in their military, can even defend one Nigerian project. So what they now do. Is to go to Niger, go to Chad, and start importing militias. And that's why Gandhi just said something yesterday that they should close the borders, that a lot of militias are coming in with military, with uh, guns. 
Because they don't even have faith on their military again. You understand? Because they understand how IPOB is using social media to penetrate. You can stop IPOB from traveling to Medugri to address the military. But you cannot stop us like some of them are here listening. You cannot stop them from being here to listen to the message from heaven. The truth message, the message of truth, and that's why immediately they come. We give why you bring your whole chain, you know, near Byron, near her pen. As some of them I know, some of them already. Man, these guys listen, and they are seeing sense. They are, they are even just there to hence let us just earn salary for salary sake, for survival sake. And this is what these guys are seeing. And it's giving more and more. Call them DSS officer, police, army, air force, as far as they have use. Contacts with IPOB message. The message of truth, of course. The message of liberation. The message of freedom. And that is how we keep on, you know, welcoming them, giving them seats. I like a word, you know, you know, I'm not a word, you know, 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 you to remove the minds of people from believing in the contraption and they know it. <laughs> See, it takes IPOB to, <laughs> to send a man, go, a man who was born, and the parents asked him, What can we call you? He said, Call me lie. It takes IPOB. To relegate such a man anointed to lie. He, you know, it, it was it was over that <coughs> nah, you don't you need to understand. When Lai Mohammed came, he thought he's something he can will be gave him. What we call the remedia front that he abandoned his position as the minister for information and start talking that before 2023 light will start being permanent. Now he happens to lay information in a puzzle about energy because the heat is receiving there is much, you know. So that is just the way it is. That is just the way it is. So we must remain steadfast. When the director says something, he will always say he will destroy them. You know, with the truth. Is not boasting. Is not an exaggeration. Over 80%. This is a, go and research. Make a call. Find out. Over 80% of people in Nigeria, I'm not telling you their friends, discuss on daily basis Namdekano and IPOB. And as I speak to you, over 90% of Nigerians believe that Asorok is empty. Also of Namdekano's findings. Also of Namdekano's findings. Over 80% of Nigerian population believe that Asorok is empty. How would they believe that? 
without listening to Mazen Nandekan. Like uh, this evening, yeah, as in today's evening, before you know it, go to Philly Station by 3 4. Everybody with his jelly can. Ask them why are you people buying a lot of food. Some of them will just be looking at you as if you are coming from Mars. So you are coming from another planet. And the eyes they are looking at you is. We can't even count when you use Omar or Omar na name will lose your by by seven. It's just it's just happening. So what am I trying to say? What we are trying to say is that Mazen Namdekan, as a result of his wonderful strategy, have succeeded in teaching Nigeria. A lesson they will never forget. The only thing that can save them, the only option they have is to shut down the internet. Which they can never do. <laughs> it's beyond their power. But in as much as this platform is existing, <laughs> you know, there is a, there is this story they call uh, Ikere. I don't know. For Ikere is a kind of fly. I don't know. I'm not my hand here and for you anyway. It's a very stubborn fly, uh, fly Ikere. And I said, Ikere, be moke bo jo. You don't know if you if you hit Ikere, you might even maybe go out of the other. Now, I have one Ikere. So, these are some of the things, the situation this country is. <laughs> they, don't know, they don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to handle it. And it's a concern to them. So, I want to, I think we have really taken a lot of time here. I tried to work on some persons on the but Facebook wouldn't want love that I uh, want that anyway so uh, the truth is this uh, we have really really talked and uh, if we keep talking 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 we have a lot of things to say but <clears throat> because of the time anyway we have really spent some time here so we must remain results we must remain results. it doesn't matter you know you know I really enjoy this struggle a lot. People might not really know why. <laughs> I feel happy. <laughs> we are at home. Some of us are marrow. 